Well, hello guys. Today I'm going to look more into this uh, Jesuit logo symbol. I've looked into this briefly before, but there's I think there's a few more points that I need to raise. But the Jesuits, the Vatican, the Catholic Church, Christendom, that is a very, very powerful force in this world. And it is a tool of Satan, which is very sad because it dresses itself up in such light. And uh, again, it's the same old false trick that they're, they're using, uh, masquerading as light. But in fact, um, they're actually complete and utter darkness. And uh, the rituals that take place as part of you know, what this is, this institution, are actually satanic in nature. Um, so, let's look, firstly look into the IHS logo. Now, this logo you will find in many different churches, such as the Church of England and other churches. Many, many churches are in some way affiliated, even if they're Protestant churches, uh, especially with the Church of England over here in the UK, they will have the IHS somewhere, or rather blatantly everywhere, all over the prayer cushions, all over the lecterns, everywhere. And the IHS is a deception, unfortunately. It's the Is Isis Horus set. Many things, guys, many things. This logo, although it looks simple, is encoded with so much occult. And I'm sorry, but if they were really for Christ, no. Nah. This is the black sun, just to remind us all. The black sun, which is the gate. The black sun of death. It's the eclipse. Now, we all know that the black sun is a very bad thing. So then it shouldn't surprise us that it goes so far as to put the three nails that crucified Christ on that black sun. Remember, the sun went black when Christ was crucified. So, what does this tell you? This is a curse. Nothing good, a curse, part of the curse. And we've got these wavy and straight lines which refer to many different things, but we're all talking here about tones, we're talking about male and female, we're talking about the androgynous one, which they call the Alpha and the Omega. Personal Jesus Someone to hear your prayers here and the omega here so this pillar is male and this is a female symbol so we've got the androgynous uh, spectrum of this this god here along with this when you flip this logo upside down it says s-h-i-t of course we're talking about the gate the ring the anus hole the manhole, the birth of BS, and this what what that is is the gate, as I said. So that's why you've got S H I T because we're literally talking about crap, the birth of crap and the beast, the black sun beast. This is so wicked, guys, so wicked, and it gets much much deeper. Also, if we look into interestingly into the word S H I. In Chinese is a masculine and feminine word, and Chinese means time. Now, why does it mean time? S-H-I, she. The woman, Isis, we're talking about here. We're talking about all of the same thing. It all leads back to the same thing. So why are we talking about time? Because this false messiah breaks time. Brings the sword to conquer. Just like Samson between the two pillars... You see the sword is going between the two pillars, of course, representing the breaking of the link between those two pillars. And that is, of course, all to do with the recreation of this reality. The, if you like, the pillars that hold up the reality that we are in. And that is the destruction of which and the recreation into their new world, which is what their false messiah will do. And also, remember, that is actually an eight, because it's a H. 
So instead of seeing the H there, imagine with me for a second that you've got the eight because H is the eighth letter of the alphabet. Now what is eight? Eight is infinity. The sword going into the stone, into the infinity and breaking the infinity chain link. Remember, infinity is the chain link, almost like the fallen are held in in some way and that needs to be broken. Of course, the same thing is the story of Samson, the son of Sam references we're talking here, which is a picture of the Antichrist, of what the Antichrist will do in the pushing down of the two pillars, and that is exactly what that is representing there. And the whole thing itself is the gate. That is a hell's gate. It's Ishtar gate. It's all the same thing. And obviously, our real Messiah took on that role and became that same Samson-type figure. He became the curse, and he defeated the prison that we are trapped in. And that's what you've got to remember through all of this. The false Christ, the false Messiah, is going to follow a similar kind of pattern as the one that Christ fulfilled to become the curse and to defeat it and bring us to real life instead of this same old rubbish, uh, looping rubbish that just keeps going round and round. Some of you may laugh at this one, but I'm going to tell you it anyway because what I find interesting is when you break up words, you find out a lot about, you know, just certain hints about what they potentially mean. Now, Vatican means... There was a certain territory in antiquity known as Asia Vaticanus and it's in reference to the Vatican Hill which takes its name from the Latin word Vaticanus. Vaticanus. Let's have a look into, let's break it down like we usually do because it gives you certain hints and these things really don't lie because it all comes back to the same thing. The word Vatic means describing or predicting what will happen in the future. From Latin, vatis, i.e. prophet. So, vatic means prophet. Arnus, anus, which means, late Middle English from Latin, originally a ring. So there, what you've got, we've got the prophet of the ring. Prophet of the anus hole. Interesting, interesting. Very interesting. Of course, when we're talking about the ring, it's the same thing as this, which is the gate. Again, the the ring of fire, the black sun, the ring, prophet of the ring. Um, Literally hell's gatekeepers, guys. Literally hell's gatekeepers who have stolen the powerful words of our Messiah to push their evil, wicked agenda. It's the same as like the Ring movie you had several years ago now about this ring, again the gate, showing it as the gate, it's exactly the same thing, it's the ring, it's the gate, it's Hell's Gate and the anus hole being just like the same thing as the aperture, just the same as that video I uploaded where you you get that lady, the performer coming out of that uh, spiral like aperture and you, can, you don't need much imagination to see that it's kind of representing that same anus hole um, shutter thing right there. Eat me. All right. <laughs> Drink me. The Eat Eucharist, me. which is a completely oh, satanic oh. doctrine of consuming, eating the flesh and drinking the literal blood, transubstantiation. Eat me. All right. <laughs> Drink me. Eat me. All right. What did you say? Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood. So this is implying that they, um, this is actually his flesh and blood we are consuming, just like in the Catholic Church. Um... That is a blasphemy, for it, my friends. Um, this is cannibalism. Completely upside down doctrine uh, in what Christ meant by remembering him. 
not by eating or feasting on his flesh. Now why, it's not only just a blasphemy, but why are they doing it? There's always reasons behind this. It's not just, not just the case that they want to blaspheme. It's feasting on the flesh and blood of the beast. It is their version of the feast of the Lamb of Isis. And that's why the Eucharist looks like that spherical wafer with IHS on it. And it is literally representing taking in, eating the flesh of the Lamb of Isis. And they, what I notice in these churches is they'll do the whole ritual under the big stained glass window of the false Jesus, which is the image of the beast because it isn't the real Christ at all. It's representing the image of the beast, the Lamb of Isis, all of that. Um, and you're literally consuming the flesh and blood of this idol, complete idol. If you're in the Catholic Church, if you go to these things, I really, really would recommend getting out. And I really, really would definitely recommend not taking the Eucharist and not confessing to any man in a box. Because we do not confess to other men. So, as I said, Samson, the role of Samson to bring down the two pillars. Just like we keep seeing over and over again, the sword in the stone, the time, the defeating of the dragon, the false Jesus defeating time, all of the same thing. The dragon representing time, the serpent, um, and just like I was showing the other day in the video. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan. pulleth out this sword of this stone and anvil is rightwise king born of England. The sword in the stone. And they literally took the truth of Christ in like this Codex Vaticanus, omitted parts in the Codex Vaticanus, admitted parts that didn't agree with the Catholic Church. Look, it stopped at the book of Hebrews, at Hebrews 9.14, a very convenient stopping point for the Catholic Church, since God forbids their priesthood in Hebrews 10, and exposes the Mass as totally useless. Christ Mass, completely Vatican-based festival, Christmas. Again, probably that same feasting thing, the Mass being the feast, Guys, totally evil, inverted, nothing about the birth of Christ. Christ was not born then, and it is, it's about the other one. It's about the whole Nimrod thing. And what I love about this site is they've put, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Guys, at the end of the day, they can do all they like um, in trying to hijack Christ and head towards their evil means. But inadvertently, they've actually fulfilled the truth that we know of the Messiah. They've tried desperately to cover him, hide him, change him, uh, write it in very difficult to understand Latin for the general public, try and keep it uh, under wraps in their varying ways. And they, even the Guy Fawkes plot, guys, the Guy Fawkes plot, I think, probably had something to do with a Jesuit a Jesuit plot to, to kill Guy Fawkes because Guy Fawkes was trying to kill King James just a few years before the, the King James Bible came out and they do not want you to know Christ on a personal level. They do not. They're even saying that recently. Don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. The end times revelation is about the birth of all this stuff and that is what they are heading towards. That is what they want and that is what they are vicars of. They are not vicars of the real Christ, my friends. They are vicars of the anti-Christ. They are the brotherhood of Saturn. And please, please stay away from their institutions because that is the primary point where this 
great deception will be advocated is in the Jesuit controlled religious institutions. God bless you all.